So let's okay. let's go on to our next speaker. Uh, is Michelle Booth, and Michelle is a CTI coach uh, who deeply understands the journey of overcoming barriers. She's passionate about helping others unlock their true potential and reconnect with joy. With joy. Say that time five times real fast. This is what we do in live shows, people. We stumble over <laughs> words sometimes, and we're going to have a good time anyway. So Michelle's going to share shattering barriers and breaking through belief system constraints. It's an inside job. So Help me welcome to the stage, Miss Michelle Booth. How you doing, Michelle? Not too bad, Dan. Thank you very much. I appreciate the introduction. And Sebastian, I'm probably going to be echoing some of your sentiment. So I'm contributing to the conversation. Um, I'm excited to discuss with you all overcoming belief system constraints. We all have dreams and desires and aspirations as well as invisible barriers that can often hold us back. So today I wanna to explore these barriers, their origins and how to break through them to unlock your potential. Now limiting thoughts and beliefs and feelings can tell us that we can't do something or that we're not enough. We're not always aware of them though. These silent saboteurs prevent us from pursuing our passions and achieving our goals. These beliefs are often rooted in past experiences and shaped by social norms, family expectations, and cultural tradition. Do you ever notice that you've been overly hard on yourself or others, especially when something has gone wrong? Have you ever been inconsistent at taking action when it supports you, like going to the gym or eating healthy or taking that course you've always wanted to take, or maybe branching out on your own? Do you ever have difficulty celebrating your successes or even noticing that you've had them? One common belief behind this is the idea that to be successful, we must be hard on ourselves. And that belief stems from a culture that glorifies perfectionism and relentless self-criticism. From an early age, we are conditioned to believe that the only, that the only way that we can achieve greatness is to be our harshest critic. And at the root of this can be the belief that I'm not good enough or worthy enough, and which can lead to a cycle of perfectionism. Now, perfectionism is a pervasive trauma response. It's a way for us to maintain control in our lives and keeps our self-worth tied to our achievements. It's a false belief that we are keeping ourselves safe. So what's the driving, what's the driving force behind that? It's fear. When fear is the motivation, then our ability to be connected to our passions and our purpose is impacted greatly. It affects our relationships, both professionally and personally. It can lead to burnout, stifle creative creativity, and the ability to fully enjoy and embrace life, leaving feelings of dissatisfaction and unfulfillment. So how can we change that cycle? First, like Sebastian said, notice the pattern and try not to judge it. Remember that many of these beliefs are formed when we are young and have the least control in our lives. Two, connect with your passion. What excites you inside when you are not worried about what others might think about you? What motivates you and brings you to life? When we reconnect with our passion and get out of the cycle of overprocessing and controlling, we ignite our spirit. Practice self-compassion. That's a hard one. Well, at least it has been for me. But practice it with the same kindness that you would show uh, that you would show a good friend or offer to a child. And reframe what success means. Understand that success can also come from a place of balance, self-care, and positivity. And when we notice we're in struggle, we can lean into our awareness. Just because we've always been a certain way, it doesn't mean it has to stay that way. It doesn't have to be hard either because that too can be a belief that does not serve us because then it just seems impossible to overcome. It likely means we got disconnected from our joy and what lights us up inside. And when we live from that space, it doesn't mean that life doesn't bring challenges. Of course it does or that we are irresponsible. What it offers us though, is a place of compassion, creativity, resilience, 
that we can respond from. When we stop beating ourselves up and allow ourselves to be authentic and be seen, ah, that affects our relationships and aligns with our values. It is expansive and not constrictive. We have more energy to achieve our goals and to be present to those we care about in our lives. And isn't that what we're doing this for? By shifting from self-criticism to perfectionism and perfectionism to self-compassion and acceptance, you can achieve a healthier and more sustainable way. Imagine waking up every day excited, motivated, feeling happy, and without the burden of self-imposed pressure. Your relationships improve because you're not projecting your inner critic onto others. You become a role model for balanced success, inspiring those around you to adopt a similar practice. Understanding and challenging our limiting beliefs can unlock a future filled with possibilities. Imagine living authentically, free from the belief that you must be hard on yourself or perfect to succeed. That is the power of changing your beliefs. That is the power of looking at seeing where they come from and challenging them and realizing just because you hear it, just because you've been that way, it doesn't have to stay that way. Now I'm gonna invite you to take a moment and think about your own beliefs, your own thoughts, and what would your life look like if you embraced compassion, acceptance, authenticity? The path to that future starts with challenging and reframing them or obliterating them altogether. I'm on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle, that's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, on a personal note, I'm just going to jump in here. Michelle, I've only known her for a few months. And to see her growth uh, and her focus on her mission and her vision and her passion are just, it's amazing. So, and on a personal, personal note, our standard greeting to one another is gingers rule the world. So you get, yes, it is. You get that. Absolutely. So, that's what it is. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate it.